You ought to have a championship football team. You gotta have one person that's so mean, that's so vicious, that, you know, before a big game, all the kids in the locker room look at him and say, man, as long as we got him, we got a chance, you know? And John Roy was that person uh, in A.O. Williams. And let me tell you a story, one of my favorite all-time stories of just how mean and tough and vicious he was. I'd go get my hair done, you know, once every three weeks. Tony D is cutting this guy's hair, so I'm waiting my turn. And when he finished, and the guy was gonna get out of the chair and I'm gonna go sit in the chair, uh, Tony D introduces me to this guy and says, hey John, I want you to meet uh, Joe. And Joe is in the same business as you. So I said, oh really? So Joe was a real, you know, affable kind of guy and he jumps out of the chair and he goes, hi, my name is Joe so-and-so. And he says, um, I'm with Life of Virginia. Life of Virginia is a subsidiary of General Electric. General Electric also owns, so he goes off and telling me about all the companies that General Electric owns and uh, you know the insurance business and blah, 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 blah. So he's talking and then he says to me, and who are you with, John? And John looked at him, you know, with those eyes that just kill you. And I said, Joe, I'm with your greatest nightmare. And he says to me, you're with A.L. Williams? 12 years after they changed the name of the company from A.O. Williams to Primerica, they still knew and feared A.O. Williams. And you can just see the fear in this guy Joe's eyes that I might take some of his business because, uh, you know, I was the enemy and he put his hand out to shake my hand and I didn't, I didn't shake his hand. I was gonna shake this guy's hand, you know. I don't like him. I don't like anybody that works for Life of Virginia. You know, and people would say, John, you know, that's, man, you take it that personal? Yep. After I uh, graduated from uh, college, I came up probably, it must have been March of 1978, and I heard the great Bill Arender speak on Friday night, and that just turned me on. And Art spoke, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I couldn't get enough of it and you know the challenge and the idea of the competition and he explained whole life insurance and term insurance and we're going to get after these guys and what they've done is uh, a wrong that they have perpetrated on the uh, american public for the last uh, 100 years and uh, i said i'm in i'm in and uh, i just love the competition i um i love getting after those guys i loved uh, replacing their business I love going back and having uh, old age and confrontations and getting in their face. Um, and we did it because um, we had an unbelievable coach. We had a, you know, a leader that you could count on, that uh, you knew when he said something, it was going to happen. And you know, even though we, we laugh today because in the early stages, Art would say, you know, the chances of us surviving uh, are slim to none, and uh, in six weeks we may, we may be out of business. But if we make it, and that if we make it, <laughs> and what you heard next was just selling you a dream that, uh, you know, I would say to myself, I get goosebumps today, and I said, you know, if only half of what he's talking about comes to, to be a reality, it's gonna be unbelievable. Two years after we were doing this part-time, Angela Williams had her first partners meeting. So she took all the wives off to a, another room, and my wife went, and Angela spoke to them right from the heart. And my wife came out of that meeting and said, we're only gonna do this big if we do it full-time. So go back, quit your job as a teacher. We can pay all the bills with my uh, income, and let's get after it. Now I came home and I was a madman. I mean, it was balls to the wall and get out of my way. My mom always pushed me. She had a sort of a motto where it was, uh, you know, we came to this country to be better off than where we were back in Cuba. And you're gonna make something of yourself. That's why we came to this country. And you're gonna be somebody. So long before Art Williams told me that I was gonna be somebody, my mom had told me that I was gonna be somebody. 
So, um, you know, those things just carried over. And uh, when I heard Art saying, uh, you know, I want to be somebody, I said in my mind it was echoing that, yeah, I want to be somebody too, Art. You know, I've heard this uh, before. Number 18, John and Gloria Roy from Florida. $99,281. I want to show you an example of how tough and vicious Scrap Iron was and how serious he took this business. A buddy of mine calls me up and says, hey John, I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. I'm visiting my in-laws. And he says, um, any chance we can get together? And I said, Jeff, it's fantastic. Uh, why don't you come on over tonight? We'll make some dinner and we'll talk about the old days and uh, you know it'll be fantastic and he says to me what do you do these days you know are you still uh, coaching and I said no I said uh, what are you doing he says I work for Metropolitan Life and I said well I'll explain it to you when you get here door knock I looked at the thing it's Jeff I opened up the door and I said how can you sell that crap? They came in about 15, 20 minutes later. They were gone. I've never heard from them again. You know, sometimes you say, wow, you know, that was rough. That's the way we are. When you're at war, it's take no prisoners. We had 250,000 crusaders and warriors at A.O. Williams. This guy was number one. He took us to a different level of toughness. I've never met his equal, ever. John, to me, and his teammates were scrap iron. He was the toughest, meanest SOB that's ever been in A.O. Williams. He would get after you like you can't believe. And man, in my toughest of times, I knew there was somebody in Fort Lauderdale that would never quit. They would never leave me alone. He was the best. Yeah.